Concord FXP, a new early release for X-Plane. We're going to take a quick look at the flight preparation and waypoint entry systems on board this new release. Greetings and welcome back to the Concord FXP. We have already done kind of an overview, took it out uh, for a spin and crashed it even. But now let's uh, let's dig into how some of this navigational equipment is going to work. We showed you in the last one there is a hidden Garmin. If you click here at these lower gauges, boom, there it is. If you click actually on the Garmin at 1000, it pops up itself. Uh, I already have something open here, let me get that out of the way. It's pretty much going to look like this when you open it. If you choose to use the Garmin, you can click FPL for flight plan. These wheels in the bottom right corner are going to navigate you through. So if you want to change something, you click in the center there or use Enter. I haven't edited a lot of things here, but let's say we want to take out Merit. We click clear. Okay, it says remove. You don't click OK. You click. Um, I think we're gonna click enter. Yes, enter removed it. But let's say we wanted to put in that waypoint, then we would uh, make sure we're actually on the correct line. So here's the open space. All right. So to enter merit, we're going to click the center. That's selected. There we go. When this pops up, you're going to use the outer ring to move your cursor functionally. And it's filling in A because I didn't select any letters. We can't have blanks. The inner circle is going to actually scroll through that. So you should start at the beginning. You're going to notice that screen is already trying to populate with a potential waypoint. So there's M. Go to the outer wheel. Move over. Moving over. And R. Try to scroll a little faster. I. One letter to go. There's our five letter GPS waypoint. So once we have it, if that's what we want, we're going to click Enter. You see down here it says press enter to accept. Accepted, there it is. I believe if we want to enter an altitude, we can probably scroll over there and change that. Okay, but uh, I'm not really interested in the Garmin. I just wanted to show you how those points are put in. Let's get the Garmin out of the way. To get rid of the uh, should we say in sim displayed version in the 3D? You're going to click on the bezel. So let's go to the way I actually wanted you to do this. Go to the graphical user interface. Click flight preparation, waypoint entry. You've noticed I got about six waypoints in here already. Um, if you want to go back and edit one, you simply go to the number and you see how all the data populates. So let's do two or three different types just to see how it's going to work. You notice here it says type LL, that's for latitude and longitude. We're going to pull this straight off the sim brief. Uh, we don't get an iCal for a latitude longitude. That's just going to be for airports, your GPS waypoints, the five letter one. So let's see what our next one is, 56. 040, okay, 56 north, 040, alright. So we're going to put in, yeah, I'm going to do it wrong for a second. If you try and do 56, you see it says please start 
Flat longitude entries with the correct cardinal direction. So it's north, 56. Uh, this is going to need a value. If you go in the sim brief and you look at the full latitude longitude, you will see the uh, decimal positions. And for these uh, Atlantic tracks, at least on the plan I have pulled up right now, they're all zeros at the end. And our longitude is uh, 40 west, so we're going to put in W for west, 0 for 0, and it's also zeroed out. I put in a flight level, I haven't tried this flying this yet, but 55,000 feet is within the super cruise range for Concorde. And airspeed, I put 2.2 for a mock speed and not an indicated airspeed. If you look up here at the things I've already put in, this first waypoint, Merit, um, it's not that far from the airport, I believe. It's maybe about 20 miles out. I'm trying to look in the other window to find it for you. But regardless, it's close enough that we're probably not out to sea. We're not really ready to be super cruising. So I put in 28,000 feet. A speed of 375. This is pretty much the optimum subsonic cruise level that Concorde would have utilized when it was over land and restricted from going supersonic. All right, so did we insert that? No, I typed it up and we didn't do it. So uh, when we're done putting in our information, we're going to click insert. It went green, says it's accepted. There it is as number seven. So I'm going to skip the rest of the Atlantic tracks and I'm just gonna move down to some of the uh, arrival points since I'm not actually flying this it doesn't really matter we're messing around uh, there's gonna be a VOR W A L get out towards England first we need to go to type just click there it's not an airport APT uh, fixes are your GPS five letters so it's not that VOR there we go W A L. I do not need to input latitude and longitude. Uh, I do need to put in this, so I'm just kind of making these numbers up at the moment. Let's assume we're already over land because we've got a VOR, so it needs to be sitting on something. Oh, it looks good. Did it take it? There it is. There it is. There it is. Interesting. Look at this time. I did not notice that yet. All right, so let's try another. After wall, we're going to Eklad, E-K-L-A-D. That will be a fix. There we go. So we switch to fix, E-K-L-A-D. Uh, I'm going to maintain that same airspeed. Insert. I know we're running roughshod over reality to do this, but let's just throw an airport at the end. London Heathrow is E-G-L-L, -L, so let's go to airport, APT for airport, E-G-L-L. -L. Do we actually need an altitude? Let's leave that, let's see if it's going to let it be blank. It's, uh... All right, it appears to have worked. You can see we have distances calculated, times calculated. Uh, just for fun, let's let's go to the next step. Let's hit commit. All right, uh, the green light's off, so I assume that means everything we put in is now active. Just for fun, I'm going to hit save. Okay, it looks like the save function would put it into the default FMS page. Um, because of, well, let's just try it. Let's hit save. Invalid file name. Where do I select a flight plan? Enter name. How do we do that? Let's go back. Save. Where do we enter name? Oh, that's how we enter name. See it at the bottom. Uh -oh. Test plan. Concord. My typing's terrible today. All right, let's hit enter. Enter doesn't do it. You hit save. There we go. It's in. I don't see any particular way to scroll through this list, but let's go back and see if we can click load and find it. Oh, there's a page arrow. There it is, test plan Concord. Good to know. So you may be able to export a plan directly from 
Sim brief, dun dun dun, except Sim brief does not do plans for Concord. So at uh, the moment I got these waypoints by planning it as though we were a 747 400, but uh, all the altitudes and speeds will be completely off, as will the fuel. Just basically gave me a path. Alright, so let's go back here and see if the fuel manager is not really going to do anything yet. Oh, this is interesting. We do have some range indications here. So that'll be the next thing for us to figure out is how much fuel we actually need. And I want to see if we go to navigation. Waypoint list. That's very surprising to me. It didn't. Oh, it did load. It was just being slow. So the waypoints are listed there. All right, so real quickly, this was just the data entry portion for the new Concord FXP early access version. Um, I'm just going to chop this up as I play with it, and we might give this a spin. But before I go fly it, I'm going to actually complete that plan and get in all the points. So once again, this is the Flight Brothers messing around with the Concord FXP early access. Plan the flight and fly the plan.